Hey guys, my name's Theobald Hedman and you're watching Southern Ingenuity. In one of my previous videos, I documented how I transported this Bridgeport milling machine from the location I bought it back to my shop. Now to get it running, I bought this variable frequency drive or a VFD to convert the single phase power in my shop to the three phase power that's required by the motor. Now the drive's just a little inexpensive model manufactured by Huan Yang and I bought it on Amazon for about $180. I want to make sure that I protect it from any sort of grinding dust or metallic particles that could potentially get inside it and cause it to malfunction. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I modified this old storage cabinet to house and protect that drive. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how I wired everything up and programmed the VFD. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notifications button. Now well, let's get started. I used this old storage cabinet as a housing for the drive, but I had to clean it up, paint it, and make some modifications to it first. One inch square aluminum tubing was used to make mounting rails. This was so the air could flow all the way around the drive. Here's a little tip for you. When you're trying to get a nut started onto a bolt in a tight or hard to reach location, use a piece of thin plastic bag or paper towel to help hold the nut in the socket until you get it started onto the bolt. Next, I drilled and cut all the holes needed for the project. That includes three holes for ventilation, three holes for the wiring, two holes for electrical junction boxes, and several other smaller holes to mount everything to the wall. Three-quarter inch plywood was used to make clamping brackets to hold the filter media in place over the ventilation holes. I used hot glue to fill the holes in the lower corners of the box. This was to prevent small insects or spiders from getting inside. After that, I covered the electrical grounding points with tape before applying the final coat of paint. With the box secured to the wall, I drilled a hole through the OSB for the power wire. The ventilation holes are designed to let warm air escape through the top of the box while pulling cooler air in through the bottom. Now to give you a little insight as to how I've got this thing set up, I've got a double pole toggle switch on the side of the cabinet. That allows me to disconnect both legs of the 240 volt power supply that's going to the drive. And I tapped into one side of that to control a 120 volt receptacle in the bottom of the cabinet. Now I've got my digital readout display and my x-axis power feed plugged into this receptacle. This way I can control the power to everything on my milling machine with just one switch. And as far as the cabinet itself, I'm not really sure what it was used for prior to whenever I got it. It's not an expensive piece. It's kind of thin gauge material and kind of flimsy, 
But all I really needed it to do was keep the dust off the unit and hide the wiring. And being that I got it for free, it made it pretty much perfect for this particular project because the is all about saving some money. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button because I got more videos on the way. So until next time, I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.